And tonight, um, we're going to be speaking on step five, which um, in just a few minutes, I'm going to bring some things out to you. Um, But first of all, those of you that don't know me, I'm Michael, and I'm just a freak, Jesus freak. Um, That's about all I claim. And... I always pray in the morning that when um, I get up and I say, Lord, let me represent you today, not from me, but from you, because I'm not worthy of this. And by the way, my name's already trash, so if anybody's name's out there, it's going to be yours, so help me. (laughs) So he usually does, uh, except for coming over here on Hardin Valley, who laughed, yeah, <laughs> wow, those people, oh, you look, some of those guys are hateful, like this little girl is flipping me off and stuff, but anyway, I, I maintain that it's good to be here tonight, um, as we talk about step five shortly, um, I want you guys to really start thinking about a few things. Uh, first, when we admit stuff, we really don't want to. I'm going to share some things with you. But before we do that, let's go before the Lord in prayer because I need it. Does anybody else need prayer? Amen. Yeah. So let's just go before the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Father, first of all, for this opportunity to come and share tonight. I know, Lord, that there's been many times that... Um, We all have fallen, make mistakes, do stupid stuff. And we need to admit that because we don't have all of our baskets in a row. And it's time to take the mask off, Lord, and just be who we are because that's the way you created us. In Jesus' name, amen. So last week, um, hopefully, I, wasn't, I haven't been here in a couple of weeks. It's really been bad for me. But uh, last week, Mark uh, hopefully taught on step four. Anyone here? Yeah. Is that what he spoke on? Um, and step four kind of ties really in with step five because I like to refer to step four as you're not all that in a slice of bread. Um, and once you start digging around in your closet, you really start realizing that. Um, dang, I'm not. And I've got a lot of stuff that I need cleaned up. So you make an inventory of that, right? And then out of that inventory, you're going to find that you need to admit that stuff to somebody. And so that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Step five says this, that we admit to God, ourselves, and another human being, the exact nature of our wrong. Um, Do you have that slide that I sent? Yeah. There's me. Um, Now, escort you me a moment. Listen to me, please. That doesn't work, okay? This, This is not admitting to somebody because like you, well, yeah, pastor, I admitted to my emotional support dog. Well, I did too, and there's looking. So <clears throat> that doesn't work. But what we want to do is start really grinding down into this mess. Um, and when we admit to God, ourselves and another human being, the exact nature of our wrong, we are going to find a couple of really interesting things that start to take place. Um, And the first thing about this is as we start to look closer, as we start to look to and start admitting our wrongs, it's kind of like confession. Anybody go to confession besides me? Uh, A couple of you, okay. But, I mean, you confess. That's what we do. We confess our wrongs. We start admitting um, that we have a problem. 
And to admit that we have done something wrong is not easy. Amen? Anybody have a, anybody good about that? Admitting you're wrong, even when you're not wrong. Even when you're wrong, you're, you're, you're going to tell somebody you're not wrong knowing that you're wrong. Does that make sense? Good, because it didn't to me. <laughs> but we do. That's what we do. You know, the whole time that you're saying, I, I, no, 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 and you know it's yes. Um, I work down at Carm, down to the main campus, and it's hard down there. I lost two, two people on the street last week um, to overdose. And so the week before that, I was called out on the street because I, I've done a bunch of overdose interventions. And so this girl was like laying on the sidewalk um, and we, I was trying to get a response out of her, see what I needed to do. Well, this guy came running up and kind of, by then my adrenaline's up to there, you know what I mean? And so when this guy came running up, he's a, he's, he stays there, he loves people, really does. And so he was concerned about her, and, and I told him, I said, get out of the way, let me see what's going on, and I was very short with him. Anybody ever done that? Been short? And so he yelled, I yelled, I threw the director trump card out, and I heard his feelings, and he walked off. And immediately, <laughs> the Holy Spirit said, well, that, <laughs> you did real good there, idiot. So... I worked, I mean, with her, we got her in an ambulance and she got gone. And I looked for him all day. Um, and he ended up going down to the park, which worried me sick because I was afraid he's gonna do something stupid. So that afternoon he came in and I walked right up to him and I said, please forgive me. I was, I was wrong the way I talked to you. And he started crying and said, no, pastor, forgive me. I'm like, no, let's forgive each other. Said, but it's not easy to admit you're wrong. My daddy, uh, he uh, retired from the Navy. I mean, I got any Navy guys in here? So you all know what I'm talking about. He'd tell me, boy, I might not always be right, but I'm never wrong. <laughs> yes, Daddy. <laughs> I don't know if that's something in the Navy or back in the, his day, but I grew up that way, so I, I never admitted I had an issue. I never admitted I had a problem. I never admitted my life was absolutely a shipwreck. Hello? Are you there with me? Until I came to recovery. And I started admitting these things, and man, I have a bunch of defects. I'm like, okay, well, who's the first person we want to talk about? God. Let's admit our junk to God. Why? Somebody. Why do you, huh? He can do something about it. Yeah. Does he know what you've done? He already knows. He knows when you're gaming. I mean, I'm getting old, and it's easy to throw stuff on me. But man, you don't game God. He already knows. So when we admit to God, we are admitting to who? Ourselves. Because God already knows. We hear ourselves. You know what, God? I really blew that. I really messed that up. I really did blah, 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 blah. I told my, I got a, my youngest son lives in um, Louisiana, and Jesse always like sweats bullets when I talk, especially about step five, because I'm very open about my past and my mistakes and my mistakes today. And so he, he typically squirms uh, because of some of the stuff that comes out of my mouth. My wife's not here to... Um, put my muzzle on so God help us all. Because I'm telling you, when you admit to God, you confess everything. 
Somebody say everything. Let's break Pentecostal. Say everything. Everything, not just some of your junk, all of it. Amen? All of it. Because if you don't, if you keep quiet, Psalms 32, 3 through 5 says it best. Listen to what it says. When I kept silent, my bones washed away, though my groaning, my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped as the heat of the summer. When I acknowledge my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity, I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Man, what a weight off of us when we confess these things to God. Amen? It starts that movement of freedom is it easy? No. Is recovery easy? No. <laughs> but this is what we have to take, this is what we have to do in order to be free because whoever the sun sets free, are you all with me tonight? Okay. Brandon. We admit to God, then we admit to ourselves. You know, the, the most suffering victim of our lack of honesty is us, right? Come on, amen? amen? We are the victims of us because we won't admit to ourselves we have problems. Listen, you're in recovery, you wouldn't be here, right? But... You might have moved from these sections of pro problems, but you still have problems. Hello? Nobody here goes without sin. The Bible tells us that if we think we are sinless, then we make God out to be a liar. Why did he send Jesus if we're, if we're sinless? You're not. And we have to confess to ourselves that, you know what? I might not be all that in a piece of cake. Dang it. I always, always thought that I would make the best general overseer the church ever had. I did. I went to seminary. I did. I used, well, I, I still try to play golf every now and then. But, you know, I do all the stuff that preachers did, suits, hairdo, the whole nine yards. Practice, I'd carry my big double dakes Bible around. God bless you. You know how when some preachers get up to this podium, when they talk over here, they talk like me, and as they get closer to up here, then their voice changes. I tried that. I practiced it. God bless you. Blessings, God bless you. No. You know what Jesus said? You know what, hot shot? You're going to clean up stuff that is not describable in a homeless shelter, bishop. And that, that's what I do. And that's what I had to admit to myself. Amen? Amen? I had to admit to myself, my life is still messed up. I need Jesus so bad that I can't stand it. There is nothing besides me but Jesus. Come on, amen? You have to admit those things. When we confess this to ourselves, again, the chains start falling off. Amen? amen. Here's where it gets real sticky. Jesse, bless your heart if you're watching. We admit to another person the exact nature of our wrong. Boy, did I mess that one up. 
This coming January, I will be um, 33 years of sobriety. Please don't clap at it and me. It's Jesus. Amen. 33 years this January. When I first started recovery, I, I, <laughs> I come from the West Coast and I, I played with the devil's big toys. I really did. And when I walked out of his backyard, um, he didn't just say, all right, see you. And I've been beat and kicked, rejected, my wife and I from everywhere. But I rode with some guys out on the West Coast that were, I'll just say, loose-knit motorcycle enthusiasts. <laughs> That's the best I got. So I ride with soldier, um, soldiers. Sons of God now. But when I first started my recovery and I read in the Bible about you all are my brothers and sisters, you have to understand the brotherhood I came from is life and death. My brothers die for me. I die for them. And as I read the Bible, that's what it says. No greater love is this than that is one what? Lays down his life for his brother. So when Donna and I came to Christ and I started my, um, I started my recovery, step five, I thought everybody was my brothers. Guess what you can't do? You can't tell everybody everything about your past. Amen or oh me? Amen. Amen. Because if you do, you're going to end up like I was sitting over here by myself. That's what you're going to end up in your church. Because what did I do? I just started spilling my guts to this little church we went to. Yeah, you know, I, I came here and met my wife. Let me read you something. Kenna, you guys are out with this? Let me find it. There is a, um, two people in Austin, Texas that have a ministry called We Are Those People. Look it up. I'm telling you. Frank Ball is amazing. Him and his wife do a ministry called We Are Those People. And back last year, um, they got in contact with me and wanted me to give them my testimony. Um, not a real lengthy one. I bet I can't find it. Not a super lengthy one, but they wanted me to give them my testimony. Two paragraphs. Can I read it to you? Because you know what? I, since I've confessed all this to everybody, I don't give a flip you like me or not. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, that's what step five is all about. You won't. You won't worry about it. My name is Michael Croker. January 19th marks my 32nd year, this was done last year, of sobriety from everything and anything I could get high on. Being born in Southern California and coming to Tennessee when I was a kid, I found myself never fitting in anywhere. Made my way back to the West Coast and in my 20s, after a terrible first marriage and the death of my first son, Jason, three years old. My life was so empty, and it was so bad, I even spent the money that people gave me to bury Jason on dope. And I did. So I know the guilt and shame some of you are going through right now. Fast forward, I met my wife, Whoopi, her name is Donna. 
And we've been married 40 years. When I met her, I almost destroyed her life too. Because what do we like to do when we're in that darkness? Huh? Oh yeah, we're gonna pull everybody we can in, right? Right? Admit it. That's what we're doing here tonight. <clears throat> I almost destroyed her life too. I had her stripping in clubs and almost killed both of us. But God's grace is bigger than our sins. Amen. Whoopi has a ministry now to the strip clubs called the Red Thread Ladies. You can look them up too if you want to. And I'm a member of the Sons of God Motorcycle Club, work with street junkies and guys in recovery. Hear me out, freaks, and anyone who is full of guilt and shame. I know the demons come. I do. And accuse you. But God is stronger than anything, and he will keep you sober. Go to the meetings. Stop listening to the demons. If I can help, don't hesitate to email me. I gave my email address. That's confessing, guys. That's what we do with this step. That's what this step is totally all about. Can somebody say amen? amen. So when we are ready to do this, When we're ready to confess, there's some promises that are out there. Step five promises are this. Once we have taken this step, withholding nothing, hello, withholding nothing, we are delighted. I am what I am. You either love me or you hate me. There really isn't any in between. And I'm okay with that. I love you just the same. But if you don't, that's cool. I'm not going to try to fix you. I'm not going to try to fit in your bubble. Come on, guys. I'm comfortable in who I am. And I don't have to. I will go, I've got on my Facebook if you, if you descend into somebody's private hell with them and stand there with them, it ceases to be hell. And I'll stand there with you. But I'm not going to try. If you don't like me, I'm good. Right? How many times do we mess that up? Oh, don't answer it all at once. <laughs> but we do. That's what leads us back to relapse and failure and brokenness again is because we listen to the demons and the voices. Here's another promise I love. We can look the world in the eye. You know, one of the funniest things is when I, uh, when I do teaching Sorry, just look at the time. When I do a teaching, I always say, I introduce myself. Hello, I'm Michael. I'm just a freak. Actually, I'm a freak on a leash or a traveling freak show. That's my next ink right there. That's just me. I am. I'm a freak. When I was young in recovery, my hair was down to here, which ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm just old now. My hair won't grow. My God, it, it, it'll be, Jesus will be back before it grows. I had a big earring, all of my stuff, and they'd parade me around to these churches and let me tell what all Jesus did for me, which he did. But when people started pushing on me and pressuring me, hello, I felt like a freak. Have you ever been there? Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever been in, in a circle of people or a group of people where you absolutely wish the rapture would take place? Right? 
But now when you confess, when all this stuff is out there, you can look the world in, your, in the eye and do this. I only do the top part because I'll throw a hip out. We can be alone in perfect peace and ease. You, you can be alone in your head in peace, finally. Amen? Come on, guys. Is this okay? Is this okay? You, you've got to find that peace where when we confess and these promises are given to us, all our fears fall off of us. Man, what's going to happen? I have no idea. I don't. But I know who holds it. And I know who has forgiven me. I know who has forgiven me from when I took the money from people's hands and the tears from their eyes still on the money. And my three-year-old son laying in a little bitty casket and I took their money and shot dope with it. I know shame and guilt and darkness to the bitter core. And I'm free. I'm free because of Jesus. Amen. You can't admit those things. I don't know what you, we've all got a past. We've all got stuff. But are you ready and willing to admit it to someone. Don't answer that at all once, I'll go to hell. So here's what you do. There's a prayer for, for step five, amen? Before you do this, there's a prayer. And it goes like this. God, please remove my fear and help me to be completely honest in what I'm about to do. Please, Father, give me the courage, faith, and strength I need to share with this person my whole truth, especially the things I swore I would take to the grave. Amen. That's powerful. All of us has secrets. Amen? Every single one of us in this room have secrets. That's what we took an inventory of last week. So after we pray this prayer, you got to check your level. You ever done that? Kind of like on a car? Not like my wife, Donna, would tell me, say, babe, the uh, Jeep needs oil. Um, how do you, how, did you check it? She's like, no, the light's on it, and that's what that means, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's what that means, Donna. You got to check your levels. Check your levels. How much resistance are you giving to step five right now? I mean, the rain's trying to be a distraction, but how much resistance are you willing to do step five? Let me see your hand. Who's willing to do step five? Oh my God, that's gonna turn the world upside down. Those of you that didn't raise your hand, you're like, eh, no. Well, there's some things I, I, I can tell this, but I can't tell that. Check your level on your powerlessness. You are powerless, amen? You are. Look at your neighbor and say, you're such a wimp. You're powerless over these things. We've already admitted that. So we take that inventory and we check our level. Do you still think, no, oh, I got that. I, I don't need to tell that part. I've already, no, I've got that part. And number three is willingness. Are you willing? Are you really willing to do step five? Are you willing to confess to God, oh God, I am such a jerk. I am. I need you desperately. Are you willing? 
to receive the love of God in Christ Jesus because that's, you know what, that's where the healing really started with me. Because how many in here, if you're going to confess, how many in here have a real problem with forgiving yourself? Yeah. But if Jesus Christ forgave us, then we have to, we have to forgive ourselves. That was the hardest thing I ever did. You know how long, the enemy still attacks me. He attacked me tonight. He, he attacked me coming in. He attacked me ever since Mark said he asked me to speak. Over that shame of what I did. But you have to be willing to forgive yourself. Can I just speak a word to you? You're forgiven. Not by me, but by God. Through Jesus Christ. When he shed the blood, the holy blood of his body on the cross of Calvary, and you came to Jesus, you are forgiven. I received that finally. Are you getting your worth of the love of God and Jesus? You're forgiven. You don't have to play no more. Man, I gotta hurry. Step five promises. The feeling of the drinking problem or drug problem disappears often and it, is, it comes quickly and it's also strong. I mean, I'm 30, just seriously, 30, 33 years January. And there wasn't nothing that they could cook, bake, shake, splatter, you name it. I took it. I didn't care. And I'm around it all the time. Hello? All the time. And because I stay in my, my recovery and I stay focused on the Word of God, to this day, I will have 33 years genuine. And I'm around it daily. So we, you can't, listen, you don't have to just mully around in your addiction or worry about, oh my gosh, am I gonna wake up and relapse? Do these steps. Hello? Do the steps. We feel like we're on a, bond, a broad highway Walking hand in hand with the spirit of the universe. I do. I mean, I'm like Jesus. <laughs> you know, here I am. And I know you go at me every day. Because I'll get up and I'll pray and read scripture, do my meditation and contemplation and walk in the courtyard and open the bathroom door and go, oh my God. Yes, Lord, I will clean it. And so I go get the stuff, and he goes, <laughs> Gotcha, big boy. Amen. But I walk with him. I walk with him. All that is gone. The fear and everything has fallen off. How do we continue this? How, what do we do? All right, I'm ready to do step five. I want to confess. Don't come confess to me. Well, you can if you want to. But you've got to get with somebody. Amen? Somebody. Now, here's where it gets dicey. You got it? I, I strongly recommend get with somebody. Get with somebody that's been in recovery at least two years. Hello? Or longer. At least two years or longer. That is trustworthy and non non-judgmental. Man, I can't echo that enough. And I'm not going to bash the churches that I just puked all my stuff out to. I mean, they didn't know how to handle that. <laughs> but it broke my wife to this day. And I mean, we've, we've been in church a long time. And she's still uncomfortable around people because of that. 
You have to find somebody that's trustworthy. Don't just tell your stuff to anybody. Amen? Amen? Amen. I mean it. It'll save you some hurts. And the thing, the story of the prodigal is, you know, here's this guy and he went away and he did all this stuff. It's kind of like, you know, if I was to tell you all my junk, we wouldn't have time. I'm already out of time. But he went and he ate with the hogs and everything. He come back to his father and said, hey, look, look, that, the hogs eat better than I do. And his dad welcomed him back in, right? He confessed. He understood. And he told somebody that he could trust. Do you have a sponsor? Who has a sponsor? If you don't have a sponsor, get one. Let me say that again, just in case some of you went to sleep on me. If you don't have a sponsor, get one. Amen? This is who you want to ask. This is who you want to ask to, to get with, to tell your stuff to, your sponsor. I want to close out with this. This is heavy stuff, I know. That's the reason my, um, my care dog was freaking out. You heard to see him. He's still in bad shape. But we have to take a step. You've got to take a step. And the first step is this. Admit you're a jerk. And that you, your life is messed up. That's the first step. That's the first step of admitting things. So I want to give you an opportunity. After I pray, I'll have these chips up here. I hope that you've gotten something out of tonight. Please, please do not go past step five until you do step five. Amen? Father, I have given this the best of my ability. Lord, I pray that something's been said tonight that let the healing begin in people. Don't let them be afraid of what they're holding, that God somehow, somewhere, they'll be able to give it back. Confess it to you, their selves and others. And Lord, be set free because whoever the Son sets free is free indeed. We trust you, Lord Jesus. Even so, we trust you, Lord Jesus. Amen.